Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, King James Version, commonly referred to. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 22. We're going to read ver just one verse in Exodus chapter 22. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse. Exodus chapter 22, verse 21. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Strangers in Egypt. The children of Israel, the Hebrews, God's chosen people, the apple of his eye, were strangers in Egypt for over 400 years. God's chosen people. And in type for us today of the church of the living God, we can liken that unto ourselves in that we were in the world. We were in Egypt. Or, I should say, we were of Egypt. We were of the world. And then, and this, this coming week is Passover, a legitimate scriptural holy day. A holy day for the Jews, of course. Um, under the law, it was a requirement to be right with God for the Jew to, the Hebrew, to um, observe Passover. Uh, today, the ultimate sacrifice has been paid. Um, you can liken Passover in a similar way onto the Lord's Supper. And people make that argument, well, the Jews have Passover, the church has the Lord's Supper. Uh, they're both means to remember what the Lord had done for us, okay? If you're a Hebrew, if you're a Jew... Yes, I do believe and I do tell people who are Jewish that you should observe the Passover. Is it pertinent? Is it uh, something that you have to do to be saved, stay saved, to be right with God today in this dispensation? No, no. And we talk about that in uh, several videos on to the Jewish people, that playlist, check that out. Uh, that, that's answered in one of those videos, okay? But... Passover is something as a time of remembrance for the Jew of what the Lord did in bringing them out of Egypt. As the Lord's Supper, we are to remember, commemorate his death for what he did for us who were once of the world. See, it's a remembrance of what our Lord has done for us. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger, nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Look at uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse 9. Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger. Why? For ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. So, we are told for instruction in righteousness, not to vex a stranger or oppress, the stranger, oppress a stranger. Hmm. Strangers in Egypt. And like I said, the Exodus, very telling, very telling. God fulfilling his word, saying that um, unto Abraham, that his people, the Jew, the Hebrew, would be servants in Egypt for over 400 years and that he would bring them out with a mighty hand, fulfilling uh, his word. And also that the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Okay? And God brought out the children of Israel from Egypt and was guiding them onto the promised land. And like I said, for you and I today, we were of that. We were of that, but then the Lord broke us. And we had godly sorrow, and we called upon the name of the Lord in fear of him and in godly sorrow. And he had mercy on us and saved us. Hence, you and I, Church of the Living God, we are strangers in Egypt. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 
1 Peter chapter 2. Remember, we just read that we were not to vex a stranger, nor to oppress a stranger. Because why? We know the heart of a stranger. Do you remember from whence he came? Do you remember that as those lost people who are without hope and without God in this world, that you were once one of them? And that the Lord, by his grace, through your faith, saved a miserable, wicked, wretched, low-life scoundrel, no-good sinner who is chief? Hmm? Have you forgotten that? First Peter. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. We want verses 9 and 12. Very interesting here. First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 12. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him. Shew forth the praises of him. How do you do that? You shew forth the praises of our Lord in how you serve our Lord every single day. You shoot forth his praises by the way you serve him every single day, by aligning your life with scripture. For example, I was given a testimony by a dearly, dearly beloved sister of ours, who, um, who by her everyday life is affecting those lost people around her. She has no choice but to be uh, in the world. You know, she's not of the world. But uh, those, even those lost people amongst her, come up to her and ask her, it's like, you do pray for the lost, and those lost people putting themselves into that question, see. It's like, amen, amen. I love to hear testimonies like that. But ye are chosen generation. We are chosen because we came to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, we called upon his name, and he had mercy upon us. He had his grace upon us and has saved us, okay? And our faith is an answer to his God, to his grace, okay? But when we came to him via the cross, hence we went the way that he had chosen. Remember, the Lord chose the way of the cross, hence, but ye are a chosen generation. It's not this pompous Calvinism with elect and non-elect. Because, you know, when you think about that, the Calvinism angle that people take, such as the Paul Washers, they, they preach about humility, but you know what? When you corner these people, I'm elect. And you're not. What is that? That's pride. That's pride. You can praise the Lord. Well, I'm elect, I'm elect, I'm elect. No matter what I do. And, and yes, when you come to the Lord on his terms, the election of the way of the cross, yes, you are once saved, always saved, eternally secure, yes, yes. But see, the Calvinist, who I'm elect, pompous, arrogance, pride. Hmm. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. We are to be peculiar. Hmm? We are to be different than that, than the world. See, the way you serve the Lord reflects the Lord. Is there any distinguishing between you and that? Is it, or, or is it something that you do just externally? Is there a real, really a change, a new creature there? But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes, we have been called out of the darkness of this world because Satan hath blinded the minds of those who love not the truth. They're in darkness. And he hath called us out 
of darkness into his marvelous light. Why would you want to go back to that darkness, I wonder? Have you forgotten that you were once of that darkness? Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, which had not obtained mercy, excuse me, but now have obtained mercy. For you lost people, yes, you have God's mercy today, that you're alive, that you're breathing. You lost people, you have the chance today that I had going on 14 years ago when the Lord broke me and brought me onto himself through the book of Romans, okay? You have that same opportunity, you have it today. Okay? That is God's mercy. That is his long suffering. Why? Because he would have all people to come to repentance. Okay? God wants everyone to be saved. Not everybody is going to. Okay? The cross, the way of the cross, that is there for you to have. But are you going to take it? Are you going to go on his terms, not your own? See, way too many people boot the door out of the way instead of going through the door. Our Lord Jesus Christ. They, the way for a lot of you lost people, going through that door is way too difficult, isn't it? But yet it's very simple. It's very simple. You just got to be broken of who you are. Because who you are isn't good. You're not good. And see, so many people don't like that. And then therein is where it could be hard. But see, once the Lord breaks you, and you have godly sorrow and fear of him. You call upon his name and he save you. That's the glory. That's the mercy that Peter is talking about right here. See, you lost people, you have mercy in that you have this day today. But God says here, which in time past were not a people. See, you lost people, you, you are the people of the devil. Hence, you are not attributed as being a people. We're not talking about your kindred, you know, culturally. Okay, we're talking salvifically here, okay? But are now the people of God, when you come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name, and he save you, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And that mercy is Christ and him crucified. Okay, the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanseth away all our sins. Okay, and because of that, because we are to be a what? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, the priesthood of the believer. We don't go to a Jesuit priest or a rabbi or okay, no, we can go to God directly like they couldn't do in the Old Testament. Okay, oh, they could pray in the Old Testament, yes. But to, because the uh, offering for sin, had the perfect offering had yet to be made, animal sacrifices, they had to go to the priest for that. Today, the priesthood of the believer is when he saved you, you can go to Christ directly in prayer and ask his forgiveness without any blood. Why? Because his blood was already shed, see. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light. How are you living as the church of the living God? Have you, have you forgotten from whence you came? You know, it's been said, I don't often like people much, people of the world, but you got to remember, dear friend, dear brother, dear sister, that you were once one of those. It's easy to do. It's easy to forget. It's easy to forget. Verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. We are strangers. We are strangers in Egypt today. Yes, we are. And pilgrims, we're making our pilgrimage unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we are. To the heavenly Jerusalem. Yes. Abstain from fleshly lusts, which, what? War against the soul. 
having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. See, a lot of religious people can do good works, but they aren't doing good works because they are a new creature. They're just doing them externally. Okay, not coming from a true contrite and broken heart. Okay, a perfect heart is a broken and contrite heart that belongs to the Lord. Okay, but see, those of us at the Church of the Living God who have been saved onto good works, and we're going to read that today. Okay, see, a lot of the false like to say uh, attack works. And whenever works is mentioned, they get their hackles up. It's like, oh, oh, you're backloading works unto salvation or, or you're preaching works to be saved. No, we've been saved on two good works. To what? That ye should shew forth the praises of him. Okay? God doesn't save you like we mentioned in the previous video. God doesn't save you to sit idle to remain unchanged by being a new creature. See, you're a new creature and that produces a change, okay? You will not find the a phrase changed life within the scripture because remember, reformed alcoholics have a changed life, but are they new creatures, okay? Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles Reference there is uh, Gentiles who are not saved. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. You ever been around lost people? Hmm? And they said, how can you remain calm? Or how can you stand? Or how can you act like that? That's, you know, that's, a, that's an opportunity. It's like, well, the Lord saved me. And what you find humorous, I find offensive. Or, uh, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. Not to get caught up in all this stuff which the Jesuits have done. Okay, I'm not afraid of this stuff. Okay, why? Because I'm a stranger in Egypt. Dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Hmm. Now go to John. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses 14 on to verse 19. John chapter 15, verses 14 on to verse 19. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. See, today, you could be saved, born again of the church of God, which is the church of the living God, but yet live as lost, as, excuse me, as a lost devil. You could live just like the world and be saved. Yes, you can. But see, we are to abstain from fleshly lusts and shew forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The way you serve the Lord reflects him. And if you are of the church of the living God, and there is no distinguishing between you and that, there's a problem there. And what happens when you are of the world, and yet you are of the church of the living God? What happens? Your testimony is shot. You're of no use to him. You bear shame. And he is ashamed of you. You can be saved of the church of the living God and completely ignore everything in scripture that our Lord tells you to do and still go to heaven. Yes, but remember, our Lord is going to be eternally ashamed of you, even though he will let you in or else he would be a liar. That's what 1st and 2nd Corinthians deals with, okay? You can get into heaven and still live as a wicked, lost sinner. But the consequences is you're going to bring shame and reproach upon the Lord who saved you. 
And ultimately, if you are bad enough, the Lord will kill you and get you out of the way to spare his name. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Are you a, truly a friend of God? Is he your friend? He is your Lord. He is your master. He is your Father. Amen. But what he's saying here is, you want to make him happy? Do what he tells you. You want to please the Lord? Do what he tells you. Abstain from fleshly lusts. Huh? Get away from those things that the world, that the Christians promote is okay. We are to be different. Were you not following me along in First Peter there? Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. Now remember, our Lord has chosen the cross. Right here, John 15, is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? This is before that. Still doctrinally under the law. Okay? We talk about that in the dispensation videos. Okay? So when he says, I have chosen you, he's talking to who? The apostles. Okay? His 12 disciples. Did he not handpick those apostles? Yes, he did. Okay? Different dispensation before the death, burial, and resurrection. But see, he has chosen the way of the cross. Okay? Hence, this is where Calvin comes in with their elect and non-elect. Okay? And, you know, the Calvinists, such as Mr. Washer, such as Charles Spurgeon, and so many others out there, Mr. John MacArthur, Mr. Justin Peters, and who, whatever, and whatnot, Mr. Vudi Bokham, and all these guys, that imbecile from Wretched Radio, they're Calvinists, and they preach humility and stuff like that, yes, but you know what? When you corner these people doctrinally, I'm elect. I'm elect, and they're not. I'm elect. What is that? That's pride. That's pride. And Calvinism is not scriptural. Okay? Everybody, you lost person. If you've listened to some of these Calvinists like Paul Washer and stuff like that, that Paul Washer isn't even secure in his own underwear. Okay? <laughs> okay? Stay away from that guy. But um, have you ever listened to some of these Calvinists? They preach elect and non-elect. And they label you as a non-elect? It's not true. You have the same chance and opportunity as I did 14 years ago when the Lord saved me. You have today. That's his mercy for you today. You can obtain his mercy, but you've got to go that way to the cross. Through the cross, dear friend. Absolutely. Verse 17. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Oh, here, let's read verse 16 again. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Because of the Lord who dwells within you, Church of the Living God, is why they hate you. Unless you're an outright jerk. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can't deny that. That, you know, there are those who are of the Church of the Living God for whatever reason, they're outright jerks. Ugh. Ugh. The Lord's going to be ashamed of you on that day. But if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. You ever been around lost people and just for no reason whatsoever you've kept your mouth sh shut and they hate on you? Hmm? 
You know, when Paul talks about how he was whipped and how he was stoned and in the deep and how all the travail he went through for the Lord, it wasn't that they were trying to kill Paul. They were trying to kill Christ who dwelt in Paul. See, the world hates Christ. And when you, as the church of the living God, a new creature, born again, sealed until the day of redemption, you have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, dwelling in you. Now granted, you can help the situation by being an outright jerk. Yes, you can. Hi, I failed at that myself many a time. So have you. Okay? But ultimately, it's Christ within you, the hope of glory, that the world can't stand. Hence, how are you going to react in the situation when you are being hated upon because Christ is in you? Ah, ah, ah. That's when it's uh, verse 14. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Okay? Let's continue. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Strangers in Egypt. Strangers in Egypt. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Woe unto you, dear brother, dear sister, if you wish to integrate yourself and be of the world. That, that is what the Christians in the buildings are preaching unto people. You got to be like the world to win the world. No. That in the day of visitation, they may uh, glorify God because of your good works. Not going with the world. Hmm? Are you a new creature? Being a new creature has there been a change there. Yes, because you are a new creature, that produces change. You will not find the phrase changed life in Scripture. I know what you mean when you say that. But let's, let's get our speech as close as we can to the Scripture, shall we? Okay? If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And what are we reading to? Verse 19, that was it. Because you went to him, the chosen way of the cross, and he saved you and he dwell in you. The world will hate you. Hopefully it's not because you are uh, just an outright jerk, okay? But because you do what he says. Now, like I said, once he saves you, you're saved. You can disobey everything and still go to heaven, but for eternity, the Lord is going to be ashamed of you. And there are those out there who just thought, well, at least I'm going to be in heaven. Yeah, but to have the Lord eternally ashamed of you? Is that better than hell? Oh, absolutely, but... Uh. See, someone who has that mentality, it, it shows quite a bit. It shows that there's still, still pride within them. Now, granted, yes, we still have pride. I still, I daily struggle with my pride. But see, not truly broken. And someone who has that mentality, I doubt they're really saved. Well, I'd rather have the Lord ashamed for me, ashamed of me in heaven than be in hell. And yes, that's better. But if you're trading it off only to just live like the world, you, there's no way you're saved. How could you be? How could you be? How could you be? Okay. And of course, go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. You know, about this thing about being of the world and stuff like that. We are in the world, not of the world. Uh, John 17 verses 15 uh, and 16. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Because why? We are, his, his, we are his ambassadors. They are not of the world, even as, even as I am not of the world. 
And let's read verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And of course, of course, we know the exhortation. You ought to know this by heart of Romans chapter 12, right? Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, his, his gift of salvation, his mercies, okay, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, sacrifice, okay, holy, other than, set apart, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, if you are searching the scriptures daily, as you ought to, you know what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Who are you um, proving this to? To them, to those of Egypt. By the way you live daily. Okay, not by a an adornment, but from a heart that is converted, broken, contrite, from being a new creature. Okay, and go to First John chapter two. These these are familiar verses unto you, but you know, brethren, we gotta remember humility. We gotta remember that we are accountable. We're accountable to each other who are truly saved. We're also, more than most, accountable to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to check ourselves often. But we also need to remember when we start getting high and mighty, you know, I don't always like people. Yeah, but you were once a people yourself. John, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Oh, oh I don't love the world. Oh, mm. what entertains you? Hmm? Where are you going? What is primost in your life? Hmm? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Hmm. Oh, the lust of the flesh. Trophy wife or trophy husband. You gotta wear, you know, you're a Christian, you gotta wear your suit and tie, right? Right, you got to get your nice clothing, right? The lust of the eyes. Look at all my possessions. See, can't you see how blessed I am? Look at all my possessions. <laughs> and the pride of life. I'm elect. <laughs> I've been saved for many years. I am like Paul. Yeah, that's worldly. That's carnal. That wisdom is not from above, but earthly, sensual, devilish. And have you ever, have you ever been in a uh, in a moment out there uh, in the world when you've despised those heathens who are not as us? Right. We all have at one point. Don't, don't. And if you say you haven't, I'm going to call you a liar. Ever thought too, uh, little, uh, ever thought a little too much of yourself and despised others? If you're of the church of the living God, chastening comes, doesn't it? Yeah. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lusts there, and the lust thereof, excuse me. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Here's that thing being mentioned again about doing. Hmm. Doing something. 
Go to Ephesians chapter 2 now. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And you got to love how Ephesians chapter 2 begins. A reminder. A reminder. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 10. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. See, they are not a people. They are the people of Satan. Hence, they're not a people. They are of Egypt. They are of the world. You were once too. Hi. You were dead just like they are. In what? Trespasses and sins. In darkness, blinded because their minds are blinded from the truth. Because the little G God of this world, Satan hath blinded their minds. Okay? Where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay? Who is the prince of the power of the air? Huh? Who is the little G God of this world? Lucifer, Satan, the red dragon. Okay? The dragon. The serpent, Satan, one being, okay? He is the little G-God of this world. You, I, were once of that. Got to remember that sometimes, brethren. Because it's easy for us to get all high and mighty with ourselves, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? Especially when you've been there, done that. Especially when you've been walking with the Lord for quite a bit of time. I see way too many examples of these Christians in their longevity getting so puffed up. It just sickens me and it, and it terrifies me. It terrifies me because I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be someone who rubs in your face the longevity that I have walked with our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to be one like that who rubs in your face the spiritual accomplishments that's sickening. We need to remember from whence we came and to remember that we are dust. And who are we? Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, naturally, Children of wrath, even as others. Naturally. Natural born sinners. You could say. But. This is a big but. God who is rich in mercy. And we, we already discussed this. Rich in mercy. You lost people. You have his mercy. That you have today. You have today. You have today. To come to him on his terms. Don't boot the door out of the way in order to hold on to worldly things. Go through the door, broken of yourself, contrite, having godly sorrow, and in fear of him, call upon his name. See, that happens in one moment. Not step one, step two, step No, it happens in one moment. If you're lost, you don't understand that. If you're saved, you know exactly what that is. Okay, And those who dispute that, who call themselves Christians, they're not. That, yeah, they're Christians, like Catholics are. Catholics are Christians. They're not saved because they've never been born again. They put it on as an accoutrement. Let's continue. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved, past tense, us, Past tense. His great love and where he loved us. God's love is Christ and him crucified. The cross. That is where God's love is. He loved and gave. Like I said, you lost people. You have the same opportunity that I had going on 14 years ago. Okay? You have the same opportunity. Unlike what Calvin tells you, that there are elect and non-elect. 
Okay, and what Calvin teaches that if you're a uh, non-elect, no matter what you do, you ain't even if you want to, even if you are broken, even if you are contrite, even if you scream out to the Lord Jesus Christ, broken and contrite and in fear, scream out, Lord, save me, according to Calvinism, because you're a reprobate. Okay, you're a non-elect. You can't. That no way, according to Calvin. Calvinists, no use for them, even though some of them can put out some pretty good stuff. What their core base is, is heresy. Elect and non-elect. Don't forget that. Don't forget that if you come across a Paul Washer, a Paul, uh, Paul Washer, um, a Paul Washer, yeah. Um, Ray, I think Ray Comfort is also a Calvinist. Also, John MacArthur, Justin Peters, stay away from these people because they're elect in their own little brains and you're not, meaning you don't have a chance. Heresy. You have a chance. You have a chance. What are you going to do with it? Even when we were dead in sins, we were dead in sins once, brethren. Hath quickened, alive, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in ages to come, that in the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Ah, verse 7, in the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in the way you live daily and how you serve the Lord. Think about that the next time you decide to give yourself over to some carnal worldly thing that you know you shouldn't. Think about the shame that you're bringing upon our Lord, thinking of how ashamed he is of you. That's kind of harsh, Brad. Yeah, well, you got to do what you got to do. Let's continue. For by grace are ye saved, unmerited favor given unto us, the undeserving. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And see, the easy believism person removes God's grace because it is them who saves themselves by their own belief. Hence, taking God's grace out of the equation. Hence, because I believe, you're obligated to save me. I have saved myself because I believe. Arrogance, pride. All these easy believism devils, you're a bunch of arrogant, snotty, People, because you save yourself by your own belief, you do despite to the spirit of grace. You spit on God's grace. Because you save yourself by your own belief, it's no longer unmerited favor. It's merited favor because you believe. Poor people. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. And see, the easy believism heretic jumps on this. And well, what is work? Prayer is a work. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Calling is a work. No, shut up. No. The works that are being talked about when he says works here, it's reference onto the Old Testament works of the law. Okay, that's what he's referring to. That's what he's referring to. You know, your Romans chapter three that you so like to quote, but not quoting the entire context, but only cherry pick, you know, verses 10 on to verse 18, which you ignore and avoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after your precious um, uh, part that you pick out, where it says, by the deeds of the law, okay? Yeah, the works here are taught ref reference to the works of the law, okay? 
to the works of the law. That's what he's referring to. Okay? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Well, I was confirmed. I've been baptized. I ate the little cookie and I drank the wine. Yeah. Yeah. So God owes you. I just believe. Yeah. So God owes you, right? <laughs> Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, new creatures created in Christ Jesus. New creatures, new birth, not a mere changed life. Like I said, recovering alcoholics and drug addicts have a changed life, but are they a new creature? Okay, I understand what they say about the changed life. I do, but you got to remember, like I said, Drug addicts can have a changed life, but not be new creatures. You need to be a new creature. Hence, the change will come. Okay? Be careful of that. Watch out for that. For we are his workmanship, new creatures, created in Christ Jesus unto, unto, don't look at me, look at the verse, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. See, God does not save you just so you can sit there and wait for him to call you up. It doesn't work like that. Okay? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. We're new creatures. On to good works. Not to stay saved or to save ourselves. No. But to shew forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Absolutely. Amen. Hold your place here, thou. And go to Romans chapter 6. Go to Romans chapter 6. We got to remember, brethren, from whence we came. Because it is way too easy, and I see this in so many Christians. They have this thing of humility, but when you press them, when they are challenged... They resort to their accomplishments. Well, I have done this. I have done that. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Hmm. I see too many Christians rubbing longevity in your face, rubbing accomplishments in your face. That's wrong. That's wrong. Romans chapter 6, verses 21 to verse 23. Okay? Now, we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Okay? Verse 10 in Ephesians 2. For we are his workmanship. We are saved by his grace. And the answer to his grace is our faith. By grace through faith. Okay? Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk in them. How do we walk in them? We live our lives according to the scriptures. What are the good works after salvation? Talked about in scripture. Told to us in scripture, especially in the Pauline epistles for this dispensation on how we should be. Okay? But let's remember Romans chapter 6 verses 20 on to verse 23. For when ye were the servants of sin, not held at gunpoint, you're not a slave, because a slave doesn't have a choice, a servant does. And you got the Calvinists who say, uh, when it comes to this, wanted to say, for when ye were the slaves of sin, and today the, to the Calvinists, you're slaves of Christ? No, see, that would make you a robot. God doesn't want a robot to serve him. He wants you to make the right choice, choices from a broken, contrite heart that belongs unto him. But you take out servants and say, slave. Slave doesn't have a choice. Servant does. 
don't forget that. Calvinism is so heretical at its core, it's not even funny. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. And, and, and verse, verse 21 there, brethren. When the Lord saved me, going on 14 years ago, I threw out all my pornography, all the filth in my life, threw it away. Why would you want to go back to those things of the world, even, even in a minuscule way? Why would you want to go back to the things that, when he saved you, you were once ashamed? Why? Why? Oh, Satan can dress up sin to make it look so pretty and beautiful. Oh, a little doesn't hurt, right? We all do it, right? That was one good thing that Ruckman did about the rudiments of the world. Yeah, one few good things that he did. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah. You are ashamed of what you once were, right? How often do we forget, though, of what we once were? And trade that off in boasting ourselves over Christ for what we are. Who made you what you are? You or the Lord? You look at some of these Christians, you would think it was themselves. And the way they rub it in your face? Uh huh. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You were once the servants of sin. You've got to remember that. Especially when you come across people who just rub you the wrong way and rub you raw. You got to remember, you were once one of those people too. And isn't it getting even more challenging today, right? Oh yeah, it is. Especially with these Christians. With their just believe and wanting to mingle themselves in with that. And here we come along as the church of the living God, as we ought to, to be witness unto the religious, unto the Christians, unto the lost. But if we're not careful, we can puff ourselves up and become odious in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Gotta be careful. We gotta remember from whence we came. Now go back to Ephesians chapter 2. We'll be reading verses 11 on to verse 13. And we're going to really dissect here a little bit. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, okay, Paul here from verses 1 on to verse 10 talks about how we were once of the world and how by grace through faith we are saved and we are new creatures created unto good works to shew forth the praises of him who hath called us from darkness into his marvelous light to live as an example unto the lost and unto these Christians. Okay? But look at this admonition because what Paul struggled with was his pride. That was Paul's greatest sin, his pride. Okay? That's why he had a thorn in the flesh. That's why I have a thorn in the flesh, okay? His pride. You see an example of Paul's pride in the book of Acts. Three times he's warned of the Lord. Don't go to Jerusalem. Three times. Don't go. Don't go. But he did. He paid a price. He, he went to Rome. But it's evident, the, quite evident in Scripture, that the Lord would have preferred to put him in there another way. But then again, see, God's not forcing anything on people. So Paul, when it comes to matters such as this, you better listen. You ought to listen to the Lord when he speaks to you about pride. He hates it. 
Wherefore, verse 11, remember. Remember. Don't dwell there. Don't dwell there because the devils want to make you dwell on the past failings. When we are to, like it says in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 14, I wrote that down, <laughs> where we're supposed to forget those things that are behind and press forward. But see, the devils want you to stick back here. Okay? Don't you? But, wherefore remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Made by hands, meaning they did it themselves. The Christians who saved themselves, who are Christians, because they're, they're saved because they say they are. Remember. Wherefore, remember. Remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. I've heard this, this disgusting phrase by these Christians, churched and unchurched. They're unchurched, meaning that you got to get them to your building. How disgusting. But wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Uh, for this, oh yeah, come on. We go to Luke. Luke 5, 6, 7, 8. Luke 18. Luke 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. Here's the part where we really need to check ourselves as the church of the living God. And he spake unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Now we are to hate what is evil and to cleave to that which is good. Amen. But do you ever find yourself despising other people and putting yourself up on a pedestal because you are of the church of the living God? Have you ever fallen for that? Have you fought ever? Huh? Come on now. We all have. If you say you haven't, I, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're lying. You're lying. Okay? We've all fallen for it. We've all done it, unfortunately. Haven't we? Mm -hmm. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And how many of these Christians are you seeing doing exactly this? They put themselves up here. And they rub it in your face. And then they bring up their accomplishments. They rub those in your face. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. The question comes up. Well, okay. Okay. Well, are we not better than the lost? Let's get this elephant out of the way. Are we not better than they who do not have God? Yes. Oh. Hold on. Go to 1 Corinthians now. We're, we'll get back to Ephesians, okay? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. See, the issue that we are addressing is pride. Pride. And if you don't want to deal with your pride, the Lord will. And God have mercy when he does. 
But go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? You are sealed until the day of redemption. God dwells within you, church of the living God. Hence, God living in you versus someone of the world who serves Satan. Okay, yes. Yes, because we have God within us. Yes. Yes. If any man, any man, that includes you, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, other than, separate than, which temple ye are. So, God lives within you. Because God lives within you, because God is in you, that makes you better than a lost person. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. The difference is God not who you are. Not because you called on the name of the Lord. Not because you saved yourself because, you, you know, you saved yourself because you believe. No, but God in you is the difference, okay? There are people out there who think they are saved because they merely called upon the name of the Lord, but then are not broken and have no contrition or no fear of the Lord. But hey, I called on the name of the Lord. Skipping over a variation of easy believism. The main tenet of easy believism, just believe and you're saved. The other tenet is, I called on the name of the Lord. All of those jumping over brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. Okay? But God in you, the hope of glory. Not you, but God in you. See, you have to make that distinction. And how many of these Christians, who oh, makes me sick to look at them, who exude, okay, there is a difference between confidence and pride. Yes, there is. But see, that distinction between confidence and pride ought to be quite visible. When all you see is arrogance in someone, that, that's, that's a problem. Because right here, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man, that means you, by your rotten diet, by your alcohol, by your cigarettes, by your drugs, by whatever. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Okay? So yes, we are better than the lost. Why? Not because of us. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God, Spirit of God dwelleth in you? God is the difference. Not you, man. Not you. Hi, not me, but God in me. Yes. Okay? And go to Galatians chapter 2. Okay? Galatians chapter 2. Okay? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, 20 under verse 21. Come on. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I. Not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And of course, Galatians chapter 5, one verse, verse 15, uh, 14, excuse me. Uh, Galatians chapter, what was that? 5, 14? Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait one second, one second. <laughs> Galatians 6. Galatians 6, 14. I wrote down 5 instead. But God forbid that I should glory. God forbid that I should glory. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So yes, we who are, of, are saved are of, the church, are of the church of God, which is the church of the living God. Yes, we who are saved, yes, we are better than the lost. Yes, we are. But see, what makes it such is what? God in you, the hope of glory. Not you yourself. Not this. No, Christ in you. But see, go to Ezekiel now. Go to Ezekiel 28. This is a needful rabbit trail when talking about this because we had to get this out of the way. Because, yes, while we are of the church of the living God, yes, and saved, yes, and don't share the faith of the wicked, yes, we are better than the lost, yes, because God is in us. Oh, we got to let that, be careful with that going to our head. Give you a good example of it. Ezekiel 5, 6, 7, 8. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 12 on to verse 19. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. See, you can start to pat yourself on the back because you've been there, done that. You've been safe for so many years. Look at me, look at me, look at what I've done. See, who are you to talk to me? I've done this, I'm this. I'm better than you. Yes. Yeah. And yes, because we have the Lord within us, yes, that makes us better than the lost. Yes, they're going to hell unless they come to him on his terms. We're going to be with the Lord. Yes, that does make us better. Yes, but see, see, <laughs> okay, here's, here's the warning. Here's the warning. We just read it in Luke, okay? We're not to ever be, God, I thank thee that I'm not like other men, okay? Okay, here's another warning for us. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the, sa the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. All these precious stones adorned with all these goodly things, the pipes... Oh, in the day that thou was created, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. You know, you gotta we got to remember, brethren, God came here to save sinners of whom I am chief. That's why it says in the scripture that not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise are called. Why? Because of exactly this. They can get taken in their own coverings. Of, Look at how wise I am. Look at how mighty and noble I am. Look at, I come from a noble line of people. Uh, I come from nobility. My uh, bloodline was responsible for making this. And we see, we come from nobility. Ah, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Oh boy. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Uh, by the way, this is talking about Lucifer, Satan, Lucifer, son of the morning. Not light bearer. Light bearer is not in scripture. And I, I repented of that publicly for say, ever saying that because I know I did in a video or two before. Uh, uh, son of the morning is what Lucifer means. This is talking about Satan. Pride. 
And because of the result, now, those of us of the Church of the Living God who pride gets the better of, we're not going to lose our salvation. No, because it's not our salvation to lose, okay? Because remember, God dwells in us, okay? God didn't find a catch in you when he saved you, sir. <laughs> no way in me, no way in you. But see, the problem that I am seeing with longevity with these Christians is exactly that. They get to a point and they forget that they were once of that. And then they get to patting themselves on the back. They are taken with all that luster of their accomplishments and of their longevity. I don't ever want to be like that. And I, I'm terrified of that. I've given brethren, it's like, hey, brethren, brethren, not coadjutor Jesuit scoundrels, but brethren, hey, help them, you know. Hey, if you see me in the pride, get on me. Get on me, Church of the Living God. I'm accountable to you. I'm accountable to the Lord, but I'm also accountable to the Church of the Living God. Okay? So are you. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Yes, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Oh, I've seen this in so many Christians. <laughs> and even in some of those of the church of the living God. I've done this. I've done that. What have you done? Really? Really? You're going to rub that in my face, huh? Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. God make a public example of you because of your pride. If you don't remember from whence you came. So yes, God in us, the hope of glory, the Lord within us is what makes us better than the lost, yes. But we are admonished throughout Scripture not to be puffed up about it. As if we were some great one. And I know for certain, way too many of these Christians do. Now go back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And for that, and for that, we go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Because unto the Jew, unto the Jew, was committed the oracles of God, right? Romans chapter 11, verses 11 on to verse 12. We got to remember that we as Gentiles, we were grafted into their tree to make them jealous. Romans 11, verses 11 on to verse 12. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? When someone who is a Jew truly comes to the Lord on his terms and is saved and converted and is of the church of the living God, what a glory and joy that is. And I have seen and experienced firsthand this jealousy of the Jew seeing their God you. See, God in you. Not you, but God in you. And so many want to pro, uh, put out themselves rather than the Lord 
putting himself out through you. Remember, you are to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You are to work out what the Lord has put in himself. And you don't cover it with the filthy rag of your flesh. And also, too, go to verses 25 on to verse 31, okay? In Romans chapter 11. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. This uh, is talking about those who think that we, the Gentiles, have replaced the Jew, or that the church has replaced Israel. The church has not replaced Israel, you wicked Catholic. Okay? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, that remain, <laughs> as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, excuse me, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Why? That through their fall, that, that through their rejection of the gospel, it's come unto us to make them je jealous. Therefore, the Jew, the Hebrew, are our enemies for our sakes. But as touching the election, true election because of the Hebraic line, which God chose. God chose the Hebrew. God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? That is the chosen line. Okay? That's the election that's being talked about here. Not the Calvinism heresy. Okay? But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, but have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. Mm. That through your mercy they may obtain mercy. Doesn't say pity, does it? It says mercy doesn't say pity. Pity and mercy are two totally different things. Go back to Ephesians chapter 12, uh, chapter 2. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 29. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26, excuse me, on to verse 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. This is talking salvifically. You come to him on his terms and he saves you, there's no, you, you're all one in Christ Jesus. Okay? You're all one in Christ Jesus. This isn't talking about culturally, you know, like you being a Hamite or a Japhethite or a Shemite, okay? It's not talking about this. This is talking about salvifically. We're all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And we've done videos on uh, Abraham's seed before, so I'm not going to get into that, okay? In Christ Jesus, okay? Now look at this again. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. In Christ. And ye be Christ. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed 
and heirs according to the promise. And of course, for verse 29 there, uh, go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I know you might be losing some of your finger space here. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. Come on, fingers, work with me. Work with me. Romans chapter 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. We want verses 9 and 10. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that's a big if, that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Spirit of God and Spirit of Christ. Oh, and the Lord is that Spirit. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. One God made of Spirit, soul, and body, right? Yeah. And if Christ be in you, if, big if, Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Christ is in you. So yes, that makes you better than the lost, yes. But see, because Christ lives in you, it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. Not you, but Christ. And if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, He is none of, he is none of His. You're, you're not His. And how many out there can do all these good works uh, for a shoe, put on the facade, right? Right, right. Now go back to um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 again. But now in Christ, ye who sometimes were far off, Romans chapter 5, verses 8 onto verse 11. Romans chapter 5, so in Christ. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, Romans chapter 5, verses 8 on to verse 11. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This in context is talking about uh, those who, uh, for us, he died for us who came to him on his terms. Those who are saved, Christ died, Christ died for all the sins of the world, but not everybody is going to come to him on his terms. He Salvation is there for you. You have to go to him on his terms. Okay? The love of God is Christ Jesus. Him crucified. Okay? It's there for you. But you have to go on his terms. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, those who are saved. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him and wrath. The time of his wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. For if we were, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Okay? But in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2 verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And for this, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 on to verse 7. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. By Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Again, once we go to the Lord on his terms and he saves us, we are predestinated to be with him. Once saved, always saved, okay? This has nothing to do with Calvinism. Again, I'll put the video for Calvinism in the description box so you can watch it, okay? Beware of Calvinism. To the praise of his glory, to the praise of his glory, to the praise of his glory, of his, to the praise of the glory, excuse me, of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace. In whom we have what? Forgiveness? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. By grace are you saved through faith? So it is Christ in us, not we ourselves. It is Christ. Christ who is our peace, who is our life, who is our liberty, okay? Who is our salvation. It is Christ, not you and not me. Because, you know, you really, we really, brethren, have to beware of this. We really have to beware of pride. Because remember, remember now, for uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead that ye be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we may be made the righteousness of God in him. In him. Christ is our life. He is our righteousness. Not we ourselves. We, not we ourselves. And in Romans chapter 11... Okay, go back to Romans chapter 11. We also see a very stern warning about this, about being anti, excuse me, about being anti-Semitic. Romans chapter 11, verses 18 on to verse 21. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt, then, thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. You were once one of them. One second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. You were once one of them. And we needn't forget that. We mustn't forget that. Because what can happen is we can be really, we can get to a place where we look down on other people. And we're not supposed to be like that. Let's continue. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Now, we are once saved, always saved, yes. But that doesn't mean that he can, can't deny you a mercy, a blessing, a grace, or something of that like, when you get too high-minded with yourself, okay? Go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Peter. Peter had to be reminded of these things, okay? Peter had to have... A vision from the Lord to remind him of what? Acts chapter 10, verse 28. This is Peter when uh, Cornelius called him and whatnot. And the Lord did the thing with the sheet and showed him what that uh, what I have cleansed call not thou common. Okay. Peter, who, who also struggled with this very thing. Verse 28 in Acts chapter 10. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. See, because Peter was a Jew, 
exactly that. He, he thought he was better than other people, okay? But in this dispensation with, with the thing of the sheet, okay? And like I said, God is our righteousness. Christ is our righteousness. Yes, but we have to condescend to men of low estate. There are some people out there who won't witness to certain people. You know, oh, I, you know, uh, some get really extreme uh, being of Japheth. It's like, well, I won't witness to a Hamite. What? Or I won't witness on to a bum or a homeless person. What? You're too good to witness on to them, huh? What God hath cleansed, call not thou common. They have the same opportunity that you had. And you took it, right? We need to remember to have compassion. We need to remember not to look down on people. We need to remember that it is Christ in us, not we ourselves. Okay? And remember too, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 15. Our Lord warning his people, the Jew, about getting high on their horse and getting their heads in the clouds for what he did for them. Then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. Learn not the way of the heathen. <laughs> yeah. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Yeah. The Lord thy God is a jealous God. So when you start worshiping yourself, being taken with all that, your beautiful stones that you're enamored with and all your accomplishments, be careful. Hi, be careful. We got to remember that we are his ambassadors. I, I've heard of certain people saying that, well, there are certain people I won't witness to. Now, granted, you don't go and give a witness onto someone who is intoxicated. But they like shun away from certain people, you know. Now, granted, the Lord is the one who guides in witnessing. But if the Lord says unto you, "Hey, you see those that side of my couple over there? Go over there and talk to them. Give them a tract." It's like, well, no, I'm not going to witness to them. Or if you're of Japheth and the Lord says, "See those Hamites? I want you to go witness to them and give them tracts." It's like, no, I'm not going to witness to a Hamite. Or vice versa. You're a Hamite. And uh, the Lord says, Let's see that there's a Japhethite there? Go, go witness to him. Or even better yet, you're of Japheth, you're of Ham. And the Lord said, See there, of Shem? See there, there's a Hebrew? Go witness unto them. Oh no, I'm not going to do that. Hmm. Hmm. And go to Genesis chapter 18. Now, Genesis chapter 18. We got to also keep in our minds, brethren, what we truly are. Because like I said, I, I see this and it scares me because I don't want to be like that. Five, six, seven, eight. Genesis 18. You know when Abraham was acting as intercessor for Lot before the Lord when he sent the two angels to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Okay, look at this. Genesis chapter 18, verses 23 on to verse 25. Look at this. Abraham acting as intercessor, as we are to be. But look at Abraham. Abraham, who was greatly favored by the Lord. But look at what Abraham says. 25, Genesis 18, verses 23 on to verse 25. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? 
that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Okay? Now, look at this. Look at this. Verse 27. Verse 27. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Abraham said, look at that verse. I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Here intercessing, uh, verses 23 under verse 25, shall not the judge of all the uh, earth do right? Okay, that's this is another proof that, you know, we, the church of the living God, we're going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. God is not going to put those whom he redeemed through the time of his wrath, the time of Jacob's trouble, or else he would not be a just God. He wouldn't be doing right according to his own word. But see, even with Abraham stating thus unto the Lord, Abraham, and Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Dust and ashes. You do remember that you are dust. Hi, you do remember that you are dust and ashes, right? Uh, Job 42. Come on. Job 42. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Job 42. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that holdeth hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Oh, it's so easy, brethren. Don't believe me. The Lord uses you. You go through the scriptures an umpteen amount of times. It's really easy to forget that you are but dust and ashes. <coughs> it's very easy to forget. When you're rubbing in people's faces your accomplishments. It's really easy to forget. We mustn't forget. We mustn't forget that we were once one of those. Without God or without hope. We must never forget that. Because I see it way too often. People in pride. People in pride. Thinking that they're better. And like I said... God within us, Christ within us, the hope of glory. He is our righteousness. Yes, that makes us better than the lost. Yes, it does. But we are not to have that as a source of pride, but we are to serve them and to go on to them and to witness unto them of the mercy of God that he had on us. If they reject it, they reject it, then fine. That's on their head. But see, we're not to be prideful. We're not to be prideful. We have been called onto good works to witness onto them. Not to replace it with our flesh. With, oh, I must have been a good catch. Never. Never. Go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter uh, 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Come on, fingers, work with me. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 on verse 5. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens, and burneth incense upon altars of brick, 
which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke in my nostrils. Now, these are a smoke in my nose, excuse me. A fire that burneth all the day long. Remember how we just read about the publican and the um, the tax, uh, the publican and the Pharisee? Hmm? And here our Lord stretch, uh, stretches out his hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people all the day long. How does he do that? Through us, his body, the church of the living God. But see, when you get to a point where you're like, well, I'm holier than you. Oh, brother, sister. Like I've said before, I know that there are people out there who, who are of the church of the living God who will not witness unto a homeless person. If the Lord wants you to witness unto someone, whatever they be, you are to do what he says. Hmm? What if it's something that reminds you of yourself? Oh boy, right? But see, there are those out there, the religious, who are proud of themselves, who like the Calvinists, I'm elect! And that source of pride, and there are certain people they won't go, well, because they're not elect, or I'm not going to witness to a homeless person. All they want is my money. All they're going to do is this or that. Or you're not going to witness to someone of, who is of, of an opposing kindred of yourself? Come on now. There are people out there like that. Christians who are like that. But then again, you have the ones that uh, say that they got to be like the world to win the world. Religious. Go to Matthew chapter 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We want verses 21 on to verse 23. 21 on to verse 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Yeah? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Stand by thyself. I am holier than thou. Have a in the name of Christ, I've done all these things. Look at the Christians. Huh? Oh, I give a homeless man a dollar. Yeah? Oh, and, and take a selfie of me giving a homeless man a dollar. Or something like that. Or whatever. They do this from the outside, from the flesh. But they're not new creatures. They don't know who the Lord is. Warning. Warning. See, we are called on to good works because we are new creatures. There are many out there who think merely because they do something that is good, that shows that they are of the church of the living God. No, that rather shows them that shows that they are merely a Christian more. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. 5, 6, 5, 6, 7, 8. We want verses 3 on to verse 6. How many of these people who are fake Isaiah chapter 58, verses 3 on to verse 6. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure. In the day of your fast you find pleasure, excuse me, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness all their works they do to be seen of men. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. 
Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? See, doing these works to be seen of men, to make it look like you're a good Christian. When the Lord right here is like, uh, is it such a fast, fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it, a, is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Self-sacrifice. You know, self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice, brethren. Self-sacrifice. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. Self-sacrifice. Okay? And go to Philippians. Go to Philippians chapter 2 now. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, we want verses 1 on to verse 8. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, un, obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verses 24 unto verse 27. And there was also a strife, uh, strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. Who are you to talk to me? I am reverend so-and-so. Who are you? Who are you? I am your pope. Yeah. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that serveth. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. But I am among you as he that serveth. I am among you as he that serveth. And go to John chapter 13. Here, here's something. Here's something for you to remember. Here's something for you to remember when you say, I'm not going to witness to that person because they're homeless. I'm not going to go witness to these sodomites because they're sodomites. Okay? I'm not going to witness to that Hamite because he is a Hamite. Or I'm not going to work, uh, witness to this Japhethite because he's a Japhethite or Shemite, whatever. Christ was among his own as he who served. John chapter 13, verses 13 on to verse 17. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that, neither is, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. And how many of you know these things, but you don't do them? Because like we looked at in Ephesians already, chapter 2, we are called on to good works after salvation. Okay? We are called on to works, good works after salvation. And go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11, we want verses 23 on to verse 30. Hmm. Made mention about this. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as fool, I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths, deaths off. See, Paul went all the, through all these things being a witness. He was the apostle to the Gentiles. He went through all these things to further the gospel of Christ. Okay? And they weren't, try, they weren't going after Paul. Who are they going after? Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. It's not talking about buildings. It's talking about church of the living God, the individual peoples. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. And of course, you read about how Paul uh, glories in his infirmities, that in being weak, Christ in him makes him strong. It's Christ in you. See, see, all this stuff that Paul went through for the furtherance of the gospel and all these things that he suffered, it wasn't that they were going after Paul. They were going after Christ who dwelt within Paul. Is that why some of you shriek from doing the works that you have been called on to after salvation? Because you know you're going to get a whooping for it. You know when you make stands, there are people out there who are going to call you a heretic. There are people out there who are going to call you lost. Yeah. But see, we have been called on to good works. To shoot forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness to his marvelous light. Go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Tempted to what? Tempted to be proud. Tempted to think a little bit more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now see, in verse 1 he says, Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And then right away in verse 2 he says, Bear ye one another's burdens. Self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice, which is charity. For if a man think himself to be something. Look at me. I've done this. Look at me. I've done this. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Okay. Boy, the Lord sure got a catch. He made me something for himself, didn't he? 
For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing but dust and ashes, like Abraham, like Job, Job who had one of the greatest testimonies that one could ever have from the Lord himself, Abraham, who had a great testimony from the Lord himself. And they considered themselves, what? Dust and ashes? Even though they had the favor of God? You see what I'm saying? But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. Verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. This is talking about, you know, now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 under verse 9. Charity is self-sacrifice. Charity is self-sacrifice. Don't let someone deceive you telling you that charity is something else. Charity is self-sacrifice. Through God's charity, self-sacrifice, God will provide himself a lamb. Through God's charity, we have liberty. But liberty and charity are two separate things, okay? Charity, which is self-sacrifice. See, you get these heretics saying that charity means something else. Then you get to that point and say, well, I'm not going to witness to that person because he... You know, I, he's not of the same kindred. Or I'm not going to go witness or talk to that homeless person. No, no, no. Why? Yeah. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Look at me. Have we not prophesied in thy name? But I never knew you. Hmm? And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith, and so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Hmm. Charity, which is self-sacrifice, never fails. Sacrificing yourself, self-sacrifice. For he who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that means being put in situations by the Lord that you are uncomfortable with. Are you willing to do that? Or are you too good to do that? Could you go up to witness to someone who the Lord appointed to who is everything that you seemingly hate? About yourself, but you see it in someone else? Do you remember from where you came, brother, sister? Second Corinthians chapter 13. Isn't it interesting that First Corinthians talks about self-sacrifice charity, and then Second Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 on to verse 8? Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. 
Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Hmm. <laughs> but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray, God, that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do which is honest, that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Revelation chapter 2. We're almost done. Revelation, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and hast tried, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Amen. And hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love. Now a lot of people like to equate this like how, how you first felt when the Lord saved you. And yeah, yeah. But I want to show you this. Just one verse. 1 John chapter 4. Check this out. 1 John chapter 4. Just one verse. Verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. You've done all these great things. You've been used mightily. You, you, hate, uh, you hate evil, and you cleave to that which is good. Yes, and you have tried people. Yes, yes. But see all these great things that our Lord mentions here? But he says, nevertheless, one thing you lack. You're lacking something. I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. We love him, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, because he first loved us. Now, some will argue, well, your first love is actually yourself, before the Lord saved you. Amen. But we're talking about you being, an, you know, you're a new creature of the church of the living God. Um, who, who is your first love? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left... Thy first love, we love him because he first loved us. All these, I know thy works, thy labor and thy patience. You've done all this great stuff, but yet, nevertheless, I have someone against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love. Have you gotten away from the Lord? Gotten away from the Lord and focused too much on yourself? Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But then again he says, But this thou hast, that thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which, thing, which I also hate. And the Nicolaitan is what? Someone who puts themselves above the congregation and stuff like that. You know, who rules over the laity. Okay? Mm. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Mm. John chapter 3. <laughs> John chapter 3. Verse 16. On to verse 21. For God so loved the world, past tense, that he gave his only begotten son, past tense, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Hmm. And our Lord has called us out of darkness, out of Egypt, into his marvelous light. We are strangers in Egypt. But you mustn't forget, dear brother, sister, that you were once one of those. Yes, the Lord is our righteousness which, which is in us, which makes us better than those who are going to hell because they have not God. Yes, but I believe we have clearly seen that we are not to hold, that is not to be a source of pride, but rather of humility. Why? Because we are dust and ashes. Who are we? Who openeth our mouth with words without knowledge? Who are we to contend with God? Hmm? As thinking as that you or I, uh, that the Lord got a catch when he saved me. God forbid. God forbid. Because you know what happens? You know what you're seeing? You know what I'm seeing a whole lot of nowadays? <laughs> Third John. Hmm. Verses 9, you know what? Let's finish with 3 John. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. And to strangers. Remember, we're strangers in Egypt. And we know the heart of the strangers. We know what it's like being there, don't we? Have you forgotten? Yeah, we're not supposed to stay back there, but we are not to forget that we are dust and ashes, brother, sister. We are not to forget from whence we came. Which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. Where we therefore ought to receive such, that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Hmm. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence, oh boy, among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. There sure are a lot of diatrophies out there, aren't there? Who love to have the preeminence. Who are taken, captivated by their own beauty. Aren't there? Have you forgotten from whence you came? Or, were, or was your situation not that bad when the Lord supposedly saved you? There are a lot of diatrophies out there. You're not one, are you? I don't ever want to be one. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doth good is of God, but he that doth evil hath not seen God. Demetrius hath good report of all men, and of the truth itself, yea, and we also bear record, and ye know that our record is true. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee, 
and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. And amen. Hopefully soon, we will see each other face to face. You know, in having people getting a hold of me who have just gotten out of the church building system and babes, we have to remember, brethren, we have to remember from whence we came. We must never forget that even though we are not there now, we were once like that. Oh, I wasn't ever as bad as any of them. You got the wrong attitude there, pal. Remember Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief? Don't ever forget. Don't dwell, but don't ever forget our Lord's mercies upon you when he saved you of all people, when he saved me of all people. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. Because if you forget that, then you can get stuck up on yourself and then become full of pride and then become a little Diotrephes or Pharisee or what have you. This is going to be my last video for a while. Um, Wednesday, the 13th, um, Lord willing, we will be joined by our friend and brother for a while. But we have things to do here because my wife, as I told you, she went to have a stress test today. My wife on the 20th is going to go in for a reconstruction surgery on her hip. Okay, And for at the least a week after that, my wife is going to be ridden to a wheelchair. So, and we live in an apartment, and our apartment here is not really spacious for a wheelchair. So we have things we have to do. We have certain things we have to get. For example, my wife needs a, um, uh, uh, a shower chair, a small one. Uh, also, we need a pad for the um, wheelchair because the wheelchair we have, we have a wheelchair, but the wheelchair we have is too low, and she needs one of those pads. Um, there are things we need and stuff like that. And we trust that the Lord will provide. But we also have things we have to prepare for. We have, we have things to arrange in the house. So our living room has to be um, changed. Our bedroom and stuff like that. Uh, we have things we have to take into consideration for what's coming. So um, probably not going to do a video for a while now. Uh, because we got things to prepare for. There may, the Lord may, it's like, Brad, I want you to do this, and absolutely. But um, be aware that um, from here forth, uh, for the remainder of this month, you're probably not going to see too many videos from me. Unless, of course, the Lord, uh, there might come a video on the 18th. We'll see, but we'll see what the Lord does. But, um, yeah, we have, we have some things that we have to take care of. You know, like I said, my wife has a surgery coming up and that's going to be very serious. So um, please keep us in your prayers. Please pray for us. Um, you will be able to contact me through email. Um, absolutely, those of you, our brethren, who can have my phone number, you know, and stuff like that. Yes, yes, uh, you can ask questions and stuff like that. Uh, and remember, being in this position, this is not the only thing there is to it, you know. The weather is breaking and tracting is now, you know, stuff like that. So um, yeah, just, just to let you know, just to let you know, please keep us in your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. And uh, those of you who help us along the way, may the Lord recompense you a thousandfold. <laughs> we need all we can get. We need all the prayers we can get because this time is going to be rough. If I'm going to leave you with a video for a while, don't forget from where you came. But remember that it is God within you, Christ within you, the hope of glory. Not you. So, we love you. Thank you. 
Keep us in your prayers. We need it. We need all the prayers we can get. And we will see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Thank you, brethren.